So the final weeks of the season wrapping up for the ATP and of course the WTA finals wrapping up the last matches for the WTA season. We have some big changes to the top 10. Also, we have locked in the ATP finals as well. The race of the finals is over. Let's go over and see if who won last week and what is to come in the next couple of weeks. So currently, we still have the WTA finals still to go. The Paris Masters last week. Novak Djokovic winning his seventh Paris Masters. 6-4, 6-3 beats Dimitrov in the final and almost wraps up the world number one. He's just got to win one match at the ATP finals and he will be the world number one again. But Dimitrov had a great week and he did get a boost in the rankings after making the final. Some of the players that went up in the rankings outside the top 10, Dimitrov, he goes up to number 14 in the world, three spots higher than last week. So Fuelin, he goes up to number 39 in the world, a career high, six spots higher than last week, beating Elkris along the way, of course, in Paris. And Dominic Team back into the top 100, 13 spots higher than last week to number 96 after qualifying in Paris and making it to the second round. Players that went down to the rankings, Oje Eliassime, he's gone down 10 spots to 29 in the world. They're dropping all the points from Paris last year. Gasquet also dropping nine spots to number 77 in the world after dropping points from last year. And Rafa Nadal, he's gone down 421 spots to number 661 in the world. He will start the year off next year outside the top 600. And that's because he lost all his points from Paris last year and the ATP Finals that he qualified for. So Rafa, he's going to start from scratch in January next year. And the other two guys also dropping due to losing early in Paris. All right, let's jump over to the WTA for now because things are starting to look really interesting. Of course, we still do have the final to be played, so things can change. But as it stands at the moment, Sabalenka is the number one. Shviontek at two, but if Shviontek does win against Pagula tomorrow, she will take back top spot. Goff heads a year at number three with Rabakina at four and Pagula at five. But if Pagula does beat Shviontek, then Pagula will get back up to number four to end the season. Wondrusova ends the season at number six with Jabir at number seven, Mukova at eight. Zachary comes in at 9, and Krajikova rounds out the top 10 for the WTA. And that's it. After tomorrow, with that final, the WTA season officially ends. We've got Billie Jean King Cup next week, but that is not worth any points. So that is the rankings, with one last change still to go from tomorrow's final. Okay, let's go over to the ADB rankings now, because there have been some changes. No change at the top, with Djokovic staying at number 1, Elkarez at number 2, Medvedev staying at 3, with Sinner at 4, Rublev at 5, and Tsitsipas at 6. But there is a change in the middle, with Holger Runa dropping down to number 8, making way for Zverev to come up to number 7. Kasper Ruud drops out of the top 10 completely after dropping all the points from last year's ATP Finals and her catch comes up into the number 9 spot, two spots higher than last week. And Taylor Fritz stays in there at number 10. So some changes there at the end of the season with the points from Paris and the ATP Finals dropping off, making way for some changes. Let's go over to the finals race now. So going into the final week of the season, there were three spots still left up for grabs with Djokovic staying at the top, Elkris at two and Medvedev at three. Sinner stays at four with Rublev at five. But City Pass, he qualified pretty much the first day of the tournament in Paris. Zverev also qualified about midway through the event. And Holger Runa, he qualified as the semi-finals happened. And that is the top eight. They are the players that we're going to see play in Turin in 2023. Herkatch a little unlucky. Had a great end of the season, but just couldn't quite get those points required. He'll be the first alternate going into Turin. And Taylor Fritz rounds out the season as number 10 in the race of the finals. And of course, he was in the finals last year. So a little unlucky for Fritz as well. But that's the top eight. And there are some banger matches potentially in the group stage. Of course, we did see Djokovic just play Rublev and Runa in Paris. We've seen Sinner Elkarez a couple of times. Even Elkarez Medvedev has been a great match lately. So looking forward to Turin in a couple of weeks where we're going to see some fire matchups to end the season. So there it is. That's a wrap for the WTA season. Almost a wrap. I guess we got one more match to go and it could change things for Sviantec to be number one at the end of the year. And of course, on the men's side, we've got the race of the finals still to go and it's locked in. Will there be any injuries though? Do you think Hercatch will get a chance to play? Elkris seems to be the only guy that might have an injury, but at this point, I think we'll be set to see those guys play. And like I said, last week in Paris, we saw some crazy matchups involving a bunch of those players. So we might get to see those replays again. Let me know down in the comments below. Who's going to win the ATP Finals? We've got a crazy list. Of, of course, Djokovic just won in Paris, so he'll be the favorite. But is it going to be someone else? Maybe a Runa, maybe a Rublev, maybe Elkaraz can do it playing his first ATP Finals, but the ATP Finals are set. The WTA almost done for the year of 2023.